you cannot escape the essence. You cannot escape the truth. You cannot escape the indivisible unity of life as it is, before description, beyond description. It cannot be reasoned with. It cannot be debated with. Only the mind can debate another mind, but the essential knowing nature cannot be disputed. And the moment we discover this, and we strengthen our ability to be transparent to that, to recognize that, to know this, to become convinced of it, we may not always have it in the forefronts of our minds, but once we do have it in the forefronts of our minds, in periods of contemplation and inquiry and meditation, or spontaneous recognition, then that every time that happens, something changes in the organism. There is a rewiring, there is a transparency, there's a purification that happens. And the purer you become, the more natural and automatic your recognition of the indivisible power that is manifesting itself as you is present. So to increase your happiness in, in this context, from this vantage point, means to, through moments of deliberate recognition, like I say, often two to five seconds, repeat it many times, and some daily meditations for a bit of a longer sitting, so you can practice concentrating on subtle, subtle recognitions. Because another word for purification is subtleification. And that's probably not a word either, but I like that word quite a bit. It's the ability to become subtler in our reasoning, subtler in our ability to know, in our ability to perceive and recognize. And it also, to me, equates with our IQ, or not in a typical sense, but our intelligence. The subtler we become, the more intelligent, the more wise, the more balanced we become. Those that we perhaps sometimes in a fun moment describe as idiots, um, if you look at the nature of their thinking, it's very, you could say, gross. Not in terms of, well, maybe also like gross, but gross in terms of like, it's just very rough. It's just very basic. It's very, there's no, sub, there's no subtlety in their observation, their ability to observe. Closer to the caveman evolution of life in the form of the human being than it is to the perhaps ET-ish version of us, the more ethereal, the more um, intelligent, balanced, loving, vibrant, self-aware version of the evolution known as human being. So the subtler you are, the more you know without the solidity of knowledge, without the solidity of attachment per se. The subtler you become, the less you're able to tie yourself to any particular observation. So there is a flexibility, there's an emptiness that becomes more and more apparent to itself to the degree where it really begins to transcend conventional reality. It includes and incorporates conventional reality, but you can imagine maybe if you go super subtle, like the subtlest you can imagine right now, the purest you can imagine right now, imagine being a thousand times as clarified, as purified, as emptied out of knowledge, of assumptions, without losing the ability to know or be aware or exist. Imagine yourself 1,000 times more purified than you presently can feel yourself to be. If you're doing this right, you will not know what it's like, but you can have a sense of the fact that you don't know what it's like. And you can download a sense of how transcendent it would appear to your current sense of self, how sort of ingraspable and perhaps weird or ungrounded it would seem. But therefore this, from this vantage point, this is the practice is to become subtler and subtler, subtler so that your consciousness becomes more and more like pure space. So that the chitta or the heart or the essence of mind, the heart of a being, the heart essence, the, the mind essence of a being, becomes purer and purer, more and more like space, where all the assumptions which operate like objects in the back of your mind are more and more observed and removed or deconstructed or dissolved or seen through over and over again. If you imagine doing this for another 10,000 years with daily effort, what, what would your experience be? 
And it's like the less we assume, the more we see, the more we understand directly. Like we don't really need time. True knowledge or true perception of things, true comprehension, even of relative phenomena, comes spontaneously and directly from the state of emptiness and purity. Whatever needs to be known is spontaneously known. But this, the requirement for this is a process of inquiry that is earnest, that is sincere, that goes to the very core of our assumption of self and beyond. The subtler we become, the more we understand without the need for conceptual or constructual knowledge, constructed knowledge. We assume subject object, it's another assumption. There is no evidence for subject object to actually be a thing. I'm not saying we cannot have the feeling of it and that we cannot have the sort of experience of subject object. But if you again, if you bring the sort of direct perception, call it mindfulness, if you will, but, but take it deeper than just being aware of the glass on the table. It's about slicing through all your mental assumptions and perceiving the moment of presence itself this moment of presence of existing of I am itself. And for that moment, rejecting any attributes, any additions to that essential knowing nature of I am. If you continue to ignore and reject the attributes that pop up in awareness, the more clear you become, the more self aware, more self realized you become in the nature, the original purity nature of the chitta or self just by having these five seconds of emptiness repeated throughout the day where you boom, radically pause, you bring full awareness, full mindfulness to this moment. And you let that moment be as it is. And you get acquainted with the direct perception of pure awareness, recognizing its own self, without assuming any attributes. And the more you do this, the more you will find layers of attributes and assumptions that you never even knew existed. Like you're assuming you don't know it consciously, but in the back of your mind, you feel like you're on a planet right now. Just one simple example, you think there is gravity. Just a simple example. These are things we assume, we don't know them consciously, because that would be very unproductive to have all these things there in the background. But the more you get behind those perceptions consciously, and dissolve them, what remains is the nature of reality rather than subject object reference based self. So it's a it's a pretty trippy journey, at a certain level of perception, because it begins to deconstruct your very reality, your very not just your relational reality within your assumption of reality, of the subject and object, but the very nature of the subject object assumption itself, the container for your everyday life itself becomes empty. And in a sense, you could say, unreal. Doesn't mean we go to the extreme of not appreciating conventional reality, because conventional reality, the dream, the experience of subject object continues to appear. But the feeling of subject object being real can be observed, and therefore can be deconstructed. And what remains is the observer itself, which is not the brain. The brain can be observed, can be known, the assumption of the brain can be known. What remains is us every time over and over again, when you deconstruct something, what shines forth ever brighter, is the indescribable purity of the essential nature of being without form, but this is where subtlification comes in. It takes time, it takes time to familiarize ourselves with something as formless as consciousness, we have an image of consciousness, but the real consciousness is what knows the image you have of consciousness. So you back up more and more, it's like you trace your steps back to source, you step back, instead of going forward, you go backwards, go backwards, step beyond the veils, the conceptual constructs you've assumed. And every time you go backwards, go backwards, go backwards, say, No, I'm not this, I'm not that these are perceptions. 
but on the consciousness that sees and knows the perceptions of which the perceptions are made, from which the perceptions derive their apparent existence. Therefore, I know the essence and the form is relinquishable comparatively. Would you rather have the essence or a particular form that's here for one or two days? Right? And again, the nature of happiness is sort of an indestructible conviction in the eternal, ongoing, timeless nature of yourself as being. So you go further backwards. You go more and more prior to whatever you sense. You go, oh, I'm not this. If I can be aware of it, if I can feel it, if I can describe it, whatever I am, I'm not going to relabel it now, try not to relabel then what you are, just know in that moment of observing a thought, a feeling, or description, only know in that moment, only purely know, for five seconds, stay in the purity, the emptiness of just knowing what I am, whatever I am, it's not that. And then you take this to another perception, to another feeling, to another set of assumptions, ideally set of assumptions about you, things that you don't really recognize on a day to day basis, because they're operational, they're functional, and they're there, they get the feedback that it's true. The dream self reinforces the dreams, current state of assumptions, current state of consciousness, current state of subtlety. Any construct you can observe, you can relinquish, you can reject even not out of rejection, but you can just let it be you don't have to reject it or accept it. But it's just a knowingness. I'm not that. And then every time you say I'm not what I perceive, it is like stepping backwards through another curtain, another curtain opens, another curtain opens. And it becomes more and more impossible to describe your experience and what you are. You just know that you are and it begins to be experienced directly as being all pervasive. It's not being here or there, this or that location bound space time. Even these constructs can be deconstructed as mere assumptions and sensations. We've never experienced space. We've never experienced time. We think we have, and we're convinced that we have, but upon the direct sort of truthful awareness, free of assumptions, pure, empty, it's the indescribable purity that remains. It's the indescribable you. And the more you do this, the more your conviction changes from independent objects exist to I'm the nature of all appearances. And it is more and more as a dream. Because it, the nature of things is perception itself, just like in a dream. Again, doesn't mean that we go do stupid st stuff, there is still conventional knowledge on the relative level. That's why these two need to coexist. Some people go too far with this and they add all kinds of psychedelics on sometimes even a daily basis and they're just kind of wrecked. You know, it takes time to get back to a balanced state, but all the masters that have been revered, revered over the years, they've been able to live a truly balanced life. They've been able to include everything and yet transcend. Inclusion is transcendence. If you reject something, now you can reject things in perception just for the sake of practice but not as a life philosophy, not as an embodiment. So because if I push this away, which is different than just recognizing it's not what I am and allowing that to transcend the perception. But if I push it away, then I have motive. And that's bias, it creates imbalance, it creates bias. And that bias can turn spiritual can turn transcendent. But then there is still this uh, um, dichotomy, there's still the separation somewhere in the perception. So true transcendence is inclusion. Whenever you fully include something not resist it, but include it, you become the container of all of it. Hence, you transcend any of the components within it. The container transcends any of the components within the container. To be like the container, you need to neither accept nor reject just allow it to be exactly as it is, and purify your individuated chitta, or the spark of consciousness that is your experience of self right now, purify it, make it transparent to the essential knowing nature, 
which is formless, all permeating, yet indisputable, and can be recognized on a moment to 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 moment basis. I can either indulge in description of what I experience, and therefore project independent reality to phenomena, or I can let it be exactly as it is, indivisible from the whole painting of life as it is. And in that restful moment where I'm neither accepting nor rejecting, neither interacting nor negating, I simply allow it to be exactly as it is. This, the wholeness, the indivisibleness of the whole painting becomes apparent to itself in the form of you somehow. The formlessness realizes itself in contrast to, through the means of the form, the expression that it has given life to as you. That mystery, whatever intelligence has sourced that, it can never be put in a book. It can only be lived. It can only be, you can only be in awe of it. You can only be reveling in it. You can only be contemplating in it. Pure contemplation means to transcend knowledge at its deepest, purest level. It transcends this or that. It's just instant recognition. It's just spontaneous inner primordial knowing of that original purity, which can never be stained, which can never be lost, inside of which everything appears as knowledge, as perception. And by saying, not this, not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, which is not, again, the same as an emotional rejection. It's not the same as, oh, I don't like this pain, so I'm not this. Which you can do sometimes, if you're painful, you can practice with it, as long as you know, overarchingly know, that you're not really rejecting anything. You're not really making anything wrong. You're just practicing in that moment, oh, this hurts. Why does it hurt? Oh, I'm assuming that somehow I'm identified with it. I'm t attached to it. I'm a subject to this object. And then you go, within that container of holistic appreciation of everything as it is, you go, I'm not this. Ah, I'm not this. You go more and more direct to the perception of Somehow I know that I am, I exist. I can't put labels to that. I can't put it in a form. But whatever form I can detect, I can reject as not the essential nature of myself. It might be an extension of it. It might be an expression of it. It might be a manifestation of it. But it does not grasp or capture the essential knowing nature, which enables the perception you're having right now. So you go deeper and deeper and subtler and subtler. This is direct path meditation. So empty yourself more and more of assumptions, become more present to direct being, and allow your filters of perception, the lens of perception, that is your sense of me as the mind, to become more empty, more humbled in a sense, more devotional also. Because devotion means I know that I don't know very much at all. Right? Humility and devotion are very closely related. To be devotional gives you the ability to be humble. To be humble gives you the ability and the joy of devotion. Devotion to what? Well, what could you be devoted to? There's only one thing. You can do it in the form of me. You can do it in the form of yourself. You can do it in the form of your deities. You can do it in the form of the teachings. You can do it in the form of your mission on earth. Ultimately, that energy of devotion, when it's purified, it's from self to self. It's from God to God. It's from the creator to the creator, because that's all that there is. If there's only one substance, then what are you made of? What are you? Not what are you doing or how are you doing it, which is also cool and completely included in the wisdom path. But this essential nature of absolute self-knowledge, what is it that I am made of, that all my assumptions of self rely upon, depend upon, and are sourced by? What is it? And if I somehow am that, because there is only one substance, then I must be it. And therefore, I must be able to know it. You can know the infinite one, infinite creator. You can know the absolute source, because there is only one. Therefore, you must be source. Therefore, with enough allowance and subtlety and purification, you can quantum leap into direct knowingness of yourself as a source, which then no longer separates anything. But this is practice. And you can have glimpses, you can have cool experiences, you can have 
satoris, as they call it. But the, what that does, what a glimpse in meditation does, or a glimpse through some kind of weird accident, or a glimpse through psychedelics, what it does is it and it increases your conviction shift from worldliness to formlessness, to subtlety. You become subtler and subtler in your conviction. So you might still be interacting in the same way you were, or probably a little bit different, but essentially, like relatively speaking, similar in similar ways. Things don't appear suddenly super different, but there's this background conviction that has increased. That's now giving you a stability and a confidence that becomes more and more transcendent to the personal construct. It's And the more you align with that, the more you become that transcendence and therefore can no longer identify with the character that is spinning its wheels in front of, inside of the space of being. 